Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Respectable viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after the break. In Surah Al Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uh, teaches the Muslims laws regarding modesty, regarding morality, and He advocates the hijab both for women and for men. Men in terms of lowering their gaze, women in terms of covering themselves appropriately to dress to dress modestly and the punishments for those people who indulge in non-marital relationships in unlawful relationships their punishments are elaborately explained in surah to nur scholars have said that this is something surah to nur with its translation and commentary should be uh, read recited understood especially by daughters because it can mold uh, human beings our daughters our mothers our sisters into a beautiful character when they understand and after understanding they observe the laws that the quran of majid has uh, uh, set and established for them if we implement them then undoubtedly these are those laws which are from allah azza wa jal which are uh, uh, free from imperfections, free from faults, free from defects, as it is the kalam of Allah, how to live in a society successfully, uh, the laws of entering one's house, of uh, saying salam and what happens if you don't find somebody home and uh, where a person can eat. All this has been described in great detail and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala de defends and protects the purity um, of Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha Ummul Mu'mineen, the beloved wife of our Nabi, of our Master, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the, undoubtedly the mother of the believers, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reveals an entire ruku, many ayat are revealed for uh, guarding and safeguarding uh, her pious and blessed character. The scholars have said, just as uh, um, a father would not want his son to be involved with a woman who is evil, who is um, characterless, who is shameless, who is immodest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he who is free from having children. He is lam yalid. He has no children, nor is he anyone's child. yulad. But he has one beloved whom he loves more than anyone and he is the reason for all creation he is our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah would not even allow his blessed shadow to be cast on the earth he would not allow even a slightest form of filth to be uh, in contact with the blessed sandals of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how would he allow a woman to enter his marriage who was characterless who was immodest so say the aisha siddiqa people slandered and spoke against her allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions and stipulates her purity, her chastity, her modesty uh, and her uh, uh, flawless character is mentioned. Uh, and Allah says, Ula'ika mubarra'una mimma yaqulun that she is mubarra from what they say and um, or the mafum of, of, of the ayat. So the punishments with, with, for people who in, indulge in uh, un, unlawful and non vital relationships has been mentioned in detail. The ones who do not present witnesses, uh, all this is mentioned. And also uh, ayat verses which instruct the Muslims that do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. And whoever follows the footsteps of the shaitan, then he is the one who commands, or, uh, uh, who gives command to Muslims to engage in obscenities, in indecencies and evil. And... Uh, if it was not the fadl, the grace of Allah upon you and his mercy, then none of you could have ever been cleansed. 
But Allah, He purifies whoever He wills. And Allah is Sami'un, Alim. He is the all hearing and He is the all knowing. And then the punishment for slandering women. This is also mentioned that they will be given a tremendous punishment. And their Al-Sinatuhum, their tongues, their hands, and their feet on that day, meaning on Judgment Day, they will testify against them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions how the khabith women, the filthy women offer the filthy men and the khabith men offer the khabith women and the filthy men or they belong to the filthy women. And the tayyibatu lit tayyibin, the pure and clean women offer the clean men. And wa tayyibuna lit tayyibat and the pure and clean men offer the clean women. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ulaika mubarra'una mimma yaqulun lahum maghfiratun wa rizqun kareem So that when a person searches for a, a, a suitor, a, a, a partner for his son or daughter then he should ensure that they have the correct beliefs in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They possess the correct creed in relation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the, your creed in relation to uh, the articles of faith is what defines you okay because there are many people who claim to be muslims unfortunately but they do not have correct beliefs beliefs which are consistent with the uh, teachings of islam with the pristine islam with the islam that was that our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought and then he delivered and taught that to the sahaba ikram that has been passed on that is preserved and it is going to remain until judgment day we have to search for that islam and that is the Islam that you and I should adopt and follow. And the, the verses in relation to hijab, which form a person's character and make a person into a modest, uh, a humble, uh, an upright Muslim. Because it's just reading the Quran and not implementing it into our daily lives. Understanding it and then implementing it. Allah says that, Oh my beloved, declare to the believing men, you know, we attack the women, we attack the sisters, mothers and daughters and say, observe the hijab, do this, do that, cover yourself properly. But what about us? We are addressed first and foremost before the women are addressed by Allah. That, oh beloved, declare to the believing men, min absarim to lower their gaze. furujahum And to safeguard their private parts. Meaning, do not abuse them, do not misuse them. If you misuse them, you abuse them. Yeah, and there are many ways in which a person is misusing them. You know, even master masturbation is, is to misuse, it is haram. And to in, indulge in non marital uh, uh, relationships is also haram. So, Yaguddu, lower your gaze, meaning when you see non mahram, when you see women with whom nikah is permissible, who are not your immediate relatives, lower your gaze. Do not look at non-mahram women, whether it is on the television screen, whether it is on the street, whether it is in the bazaar, in the shopping center, or wherever. You will look away, you will lower your gaze. This will, this is what will make, which will develop your spirituality. Just as certain things are bad for your eyes, uh, to look at the sun directly is bad for your eyes. So spiritually to look at women uh, in that lustful way and to not lower your gaze, to gaze at them. And um, this is all haram and it, it is prohibited and there is a, 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 a frightening punishment that awaits such people who indulge in such sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that and give us the ability to protect our eyes, to lower our gaze. So we are instructed to lower down our sight a little, to lower our gaze and to protect our private parts from engaging in any kind of... Uh, of acts such as other adultery, such as fornication, uh, etc. And a person should always conceal his nudity from everyone. Um, and this is the best for us. The Quran says, This is the most pure and cleaner way for them. In Allah, and undoubtedly Allah is aware of what they do. And likewise, to the women, it is also mentioned that say to the believing women to lower their 
sights a little. Yagdudna min absarihinna wa yahfadna furujahunna unto God their chastity. And do not reveal, you know, the Quran elaborately explains, wala yubdina zinatahunna, and do not expose your beauty. Do not expose your adornment, your beauty, but as much with, which is apparent. Illa ma zahara minha, meaning that it is allowed for a woman to show her hands, the face and the feet. But that means not when it's fully uh, make, made up with makeup. You know, you don't adorn yourself with full makeup and then go out onto the streets, you know, inviting others uh, to, so you become a victim to their lustful eyes. You become a prey to them. So, that this is not uh, appropriate, it is incorrect, it is forbidden for women to do that. And the, uh, the guardians, meaning the uh, Maharim, uh, the father, brother, husband, they are the ones who are responsible and who should urge the women who are under them to protect them. Not, it is not for their subjugation, but it is for their protection. And it, in detail, the Quran mentions that this is how they should cover themselves and uh, with, with their head coverings uh, and have a, a cloth in front of their chest and to, to conceal their adornment uh, and not to reveal it but in front of their uh, mehrams and then those people or their guardians, their immediate family members it is mentioned that except in front of their uh, meaning they can be at ease in front of their fathers um, or the sons of their uh, uh, husbands or their brothers or the sons of their brothers the Quran describes this in detail and then the, uh, the benefits of doing Tawbah and turn to Allah uh, and ask for repentance O Muslims all together so that you may be prosperous so this is mentioned in in detail the the rulings of hijab and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, again mentions his signs that we have uh, sent down to you clear signs evident signs and and some description of those who have passed away before you there they have also been uh, described why for us to take heed for an um, admonition for those who fear Allah for who, those who are righteous and um, we also the qualities we learn about the qualities of those people who are always engaged in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing turns them away from the worship of Allah in verse number 37 uh, their qualities have been mentioned that there are men who are busy earning their livelihood that the tijara the business and their uh, trade that they are involved in it does not divert their attention from engaging in the remembrance of Allah. Meaning one should always be engaged in the dhikr of Allah. For our, what does it take for our tongue to be saying the dhikr of Allah? To be engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you could be doing your work and you could be saying subhanallah. You could be saying alhamdulillah. You could be glorifying Allah. You could, you could be expressing his praise, his greatness and saying Allahu Akbar. And uh, saying the... Uh, tahleel and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is no true God except Allah la ilaha illallah these words have so much weight there's so much significance in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to say them in the month of Ramadan we should get accustomed to saying that rather than just sit there silently recite and send durood upon our masters Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so there are men the true men of Allah the Ahlullah that their, their attention is not diverted from the dhikr of Allah and from establishing salah from paying the zakah, wa iqami salati, wa ita is zakati, ya khafuna, they have fear of, of that day, yawman tataqallabu fihi al absar, in which hearts and eyes will be turned about. And in the concluding verses of this surah, Surah Al Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions how the importance of addressing our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, correctly after mentioning his signs because promoting and advocating uh, Tawheed and inviting people to accept the one and only true God he um, explains his signs to uh, enlighten others in a beautiful way but if people are not going to be blessed with the belief in 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are going to reject that. And then he, he mentions the importance of addressing the Messenger of Allah correctly, that we should always address him with the most profound reverence, with adab, with love, as without the adab and love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no concept of Iman. Inshallah ta'ala, I will continue uh, in tomorrow's um, Darsi Quran during the Iftar transmission. I will join you once again. Until then, Jazakallah khaira for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahir